What up everyone, welcome back to iTrust Stream. If this is your first time here on this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications so you never miss out on the video. And at the end of this video, I want you guys to go down to the comments section below and let me know what you thought of today's video. I'd love to interact with you guys. If this is your first time, welcome. Today we're gonna to be talking about cord cutting here in 2020. Is it something that you should even get into? Is this something that's even relevant still? What is cord cutting to begin with? I had a, an, a fantastic conversation with a couple over at a gas station getting gas and they were uh, talking about, asking about the car and some of them asked about what I did for a living and somehow we got into cord cutting and <laughs> it was a really good, cool conversation and the conversation came up as what is cord cutting? Cord cutting is definitely uh, something that you, where you would 100% cut in the cord from cable is actually detaching yourself from cable companies and to seek alternative ways to save money. I asked an uh, elderly couple about cord, uh, about are, are they active cord cutters? And uh, they, they responded as like, yeah, I'm a cord cutter. And uh, I bought my first fire stick uh, about a month ago. I'm like, okay, so you, you have a fire stick. So if you don't mind me asking, what do you have on your fire stick? And they said, uh, I've got the Spectrum uh, app. I've got Netflix, I've got Hulu, and I got Disney Plus from the grandkids. I'm like, okay, so the, let's go ahead and go back real quick. You said you had the Spectrum app. So you still have cable. No, I'm a cord cutter. You know, I'm like, okay, well, owning a fire stick uh, unfortunately, it doesn't classify you as a cord cutter if you still have cable. He goes like, well, it's not cable, but I, I still need to be able to watch my TV shows. I was like, okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get started here. <laughs> so uh, at the end of the conversation, I, I was able to share with them about alternative ways of saving money of not having to spend and purchase from Spectrum. So uh, they did end up having the Spectrum Go app. And uh, so they were, uh, they didn't have the cable box, but they're still paying uh, the cable company to use their applications. A lot of these cable companies are coming out with their applications uh, to uh, entice you to be a, a, a streamer in a way, not have an active box, using your guys' smart devices at home and getting in that community of people that will, will like, that doesn't want to use the cable box. They want to be able to use mobile platform alternatives. So what is cord cutting here in 2020 still? It's not actually having cable. There are so many alternative ways of being able to watch content and save money. An active cord cutter is cutting the cord from cable, but using alternative ways to get content at a, either a more of a reasonable price or 100% for free. Another question that people have been asking is what is the best device to cut the cord with. Fire Stick 4K has been on this pedestal as being the best device for the consumer. Now, my preference as the best device in 2020 is the device that fits your needs at home. Now, for people that want to game and have a lot of uh, applications and they are seeking speed. Of course, the Nvidia Shield may look and appear to be the best device in 2020, but you have to remember that the Nvidia Shield does have a significantly higher price point to purchase. So is it the best? It isn't the best because it's not the best priced also. So you have to take consideration of the price point of these devices. The Fire Stick has made such an impact in the streaming community for cutting the cord because one, you can find them as low as $20 up to $50 for the 4K and even at 50 US dollars, that is extremely affordable for an average consumer and an average household here in the States. Is the Fire Stick the best device? Well, there are now competitors at that price point. There's competitors actually having more memory. When it comes to the VidStick, you have two gigabytes of memory and also expandable options. You have the TiVo, you got the buzz boxes. There's so many uh, alternatives when it comes to similar price points. So my answer for a lot of people that are asking, what is, what is the best device? The best device is gonna be the device that fits your needs at home. Does it fit your price point? Does it fit the applications that you're wanting to use? Is it uh, user friendly? That you have to take in consider of that. There's a lot of devices that are, they're not really user friendly. They're kind of, when you see remotes like this, it, it could be overwhelming for a lot of people. Like, man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shit on here, you know, versus, you know, the Fire Stick, where this is actually the Fire TV. Uh, it, you know, it's very simplified. There's so many alternative ways to actually measure what the best device would be. In my honest opinion, for you guys at home is, pick a device that is going to fit all those categories, price, uh, user interface, 
Also, is it easy for you to understand how to operate it? Is it difficult for you to sideload or download um, uh, third-party applications? So if you were to ask me, what is my favorite device to use? I would pr probably say the Nvidia Shield because one, um, I love speed. I love I love the uh, the usability of it. I love the fact that you can plug in a Ethernet cable in the back of it, have expandable storage, and also the you know the fact that you can get yourself a gaming uh, remote. It is a, a fantastic device. But if I was to tell you that is not my daily driver, what is my daily driver? And my daily driver is the Sony Smart TVs. My Sony Smart TV. A lot of these Smart TVs have Android TV built in already. And it does fit the needs of me being able to install my IPTV service, my Plex, FileLink, to be able to install third-party applications. It, it's instant. I don't have to go to uh, input and find the, the, the device, which is not difficult, but you're not having to use a, a, a device onto a, another device to fit my streaming needs. So if you were to ask me, what is your daily driver? My smart TV. My smart TV, you, you can install Smarters. You know, IPTV, you can install a lot of these third party applications at ease. And a lot of these smart TV devices are being very competitive when it comes to fire sticks. You can buy this fire stick to make your dumb TV a smart TV. And yes, it does fit a lot of people's needs when they don't have the money to buy the latest and greatest smart TV. So this will be your alternative. For me, since I bought myself a brand new 85 inch Sony, it does have a lot of capabilities with Ethernet plugged into the back. It crosses all those categories for me as an for as a uh, as a cord cutter. There's so many alternative ways. In 2020, it has been such a huge change when it comes to cutting the cord. Say five years ago, there was only so many ways for you to be able to do it. A lot of the a lot of the boxes were hitting the market, and for people who are like I don't know how to do this on my TV, there's not a lot of streaming devices that are available. There's a lot of people that are online selling these devices that I can plug and play, and it has everything about uh, has everything on it. So th those are still even t in today's market, but back five years ago. Cutting the cord, it was a little bit more difficult to kind of get your hands on. Finding alternative ways of actually saving the money. And that is should be the sole purpose of cutting the cord, is finding alternative ways to save money. And that is through getting a lot more channels when it comes to IPTV. Thousands of channels for as low as $20. Uh, finding ways to be able to get Plex and be able to manage your guys' movies and TV shows at home to where everything is automated. Finding more third-party applications for filing for the consumer and, and the end user at home to be able to watch a whole lot more content for free. This is what cord cutting is. Here in 2020, it is so big, it is so wide, but let's simplify some of these let's simplify it for a little bit more of maybe the older generation so they can be able to enjoy these alternatives but let it to be a little bit more easier when it comes to explaining it to say someone that i was speaking with that was over the age of 65 and they were just saying hey i have a fire stick don't re i'm not really 100 percent tech savvy but i would like for me to learn a little bit more and i think on this channel we can actually hit uh, and be able to provide that information a lot easier when it comes to different generations. But anyways, so I want you guys in today's video to hit me in the comment section below and let me know exactly what your home setup is. Is it, uh, what is your internet speed? What is your daily driver device? What is the applications that you actually use to cut the cord with? And how much money are you actually saving from actually buying cable? I want you guys to let me know because if I can find some comments in there and I can help you guys tweak with your guys' setup just, just slightly, it'd be awesome. So let me know in the comment section below how much you've saved, what devices you have, are you an active VPN user or do you not need to use the use of VPNs? It still seems like VPNs are a topic here in, uh, here in cord cutting in 2020. There's a lot, it's split down the middle that people do and people don't. It's depending on what you do as an active cord cutter with a VPN. Hope you found some information in this, today's video. If you guys did enjoy, you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications on, and make sure to hit like on this uh, on this video. Love to see you guys in the comment section below. This is iTrust Stream, and until the next video, I'll talk to you guys later. Later.